back everyone to another video um i'm really excited for this one if you can tell by the title today we are doing an autumn tbr i know it's still august okay but in the uk towards the end of august or the start of august is when it starts becoming winter again so i'm already in the autumn mood so i've just been curating this autumn tbr for ages and I just want to get into it because I'm really excited to read all these books in the autumn. So let's go. I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to hold this up. I plan, yes, on reading A Little Life this autumn. It just feels like a very autumn book to read. Of course, I it's the perfect time to read it in. So I, I'm, I'm going to read this book. I, I even, I'm also going to annotate it because it's just an annotate worthy book and I found this super cool bookmark that I had in like my bookmark collection that I thought would go really well with the book so I even already put that in there. I'm fully like this is probably the first book I'm going to read for the autumn season. I'm currently reading my last summer book which is Beach Read by Emily Henry and then after this it's going to be full on fantasy autumn thriller zones. But yeah, this is going to be like in order of importance, um, these books, it's going to be in order of importance and in order of what I want to read them in, if you get what I mean. We are again back with another sad one. Everybody, I've been wanting to read this book for ages. It's been on my want to read lists for like two years and I never pick, picked it up. And I recently picked it up the other day and I thought fall autumn time is the perfect time to read this i just feel like fall autumn time is the perfect time to read just sad books or like books like that and this is a fiction it's about this old man and basically he's grumpy um doesn't really like anyone and then new neighbors move in next door and they strike up a friendship and that's all i know about this book literally all and that is just really sad and kind of the ending is really sad since this since the whole story is about this old man that's apparently really grumpy i can already kind of see what the story is about so i don't think it'll make me that sad because i'm not stupid <laughs> main character is an older man we know or we all know why the ending's sad unless i'm just assuming but i feel like we all know why the ending's sad so yeah that's definitely very top of the list of what i want to read this autumn this one is very much a hopeful it's Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Um, if you saw my book haul video, you know that I recently bought this special edition from uh, Waterstones and it's absolutely beautiful. It's my favourite colour, purple. And the writing is amazing. I was expecting to be like tiny writing. That's absolutely amazing. So, I, that's my bookmark. So I picked that up. And I want to reread this book and annotate it. This is one of my favourite books ever. And I don't really have a special edition that I can just annotate in a hardback edition. So I want to reread this this autumn, obviously, and annotate it. Cause, yeah, it just, it obviously gives off autumn vibes. I, there's like no other season that you'd read this book in, like literally none. And so yeah, I want to read this book very heavily. This one's also surprisingly up there. If you saw my book haul video, um, I got this from my friend who's giving away her books. And this is actually a romance. I'm not going to probably read many romances this autumn because, like I said, mostly fantasy. And I've been reading romances like since the start of summer. Like, I haven't read a fantasy since the last time I read the... Um, since I read A, a Court of Mist and Fury... A Court of Silver Flame, sorry, which was the last book in the Akatar series. And that's like the last fantasy series or anything I read. But I was really intrigued by this book it's obviously about this woman named gracie who wakes up one morning and there's a superhero on her in her back garden and he lands there and he's apparently a famous superhero he saves people's lives but he's grumpy that's why it's called when Mace, when gracie met the grump because apparently he's like really grumpy but she has to basically help him and heal him because he's like injured but yeah she has to help him because he's a superhero and he's supposed to save lives so yeah, but he's apparently really grumpy and I'm here for that. The concept of this book sounds so interesting. So yeah, I definitely want to read this. It's also just 
it's a romance that's giving autumn vibes so i put that on my list as well so hopefully i get to it because i'm actually really excited to read this another romance is the reaper this is probably like the last romance on my list i read the predator the first book a couple months ago like probably at the start of the year i really liked it so i did pick up the second book but i haven't had just a time i haven't had a chance to continue the series so that's what i do want to do i want to continue the series so i bought the second one and yeah i thought it'd be a good thing to just read it because dark romance also gives off an autumn vibe it doesn't feel like you should like read dark romance in the summer that's more of like fluffy romances and there's even a playlist in here but this basically follows what happens after the first book so i don't want to say too much about what happens but i think it just starts straight off from the first book i really like the first book because it wasn't just romance it had like a mystery to it what i don't like about this book though is that for some reason the pages are white i read the first book on kindle so i didn't have that problem i didn't know the pages were white because it was on kindle but yeah that's really annoying i hate it when books have white pages just it hurts my eyes why the next book is one i'm really excited for and that is reckless by lauren roberts i haven't read it yet obviously it came out this month but i haven't read it yet because I'm simply just waiting for the full time to be able to read this book because it's a fantasy and I'm like here for the full time. Um, and I honestly can't wait to read this. I loved Palace and I think this one starts off from the first one it ends. These covers are also absolutely gorgeous. Um, but yeah, I really can't wait to read this. And like I said, this is also part of the series. So I don't want to give too much away. But the first book follows a main character and she basically doesn't have these powers. And if you don't have a power, if you have a power, you're called the elite. If you don't, you're just, I forgot what they're called, but you're just seen as normal. And in this world, if you're normal, that means, like, you're bad. Because, like, you get banished or killed if you find, if they find out you don't have any powers. So Pyrdin, our main character, has had to basically lie about her having powers throughout her whole life. And she's now been picked to go into a contest where she basically has to showcase her powers that she doesn't have. Which... Yeah, and the person that does this is the king, and some romance ensues with the king's son, which he he's the enforcer, and his his job is killing like people that don't have powers. So yeah, messy, but absolutely love that book, and I can't wait to read this one as well. I've heard some mixed reviews about it, so I'm gonna go into it with somewhat low expectations because i've heard that it's not as action-packed as the first one so good to good to hear that good thing i didn't actually read this first because now I, i've set my expectations to what it should be so i'm really excited to read this i don't know why but i've been really into literary fiction lately and i picked this up ages ago and i just didn't read it because i just i just didn't i don't know why i just didn't read it but everybody was talking about this Honestly, I wish I picked up the hard book, hardback version of it now. Kind of regretting that because the hardback version, it's the same cover, but I don't know. I just like the hard, I wanted the hardback version more. But if I end up liking this book, I might just buy the whole series in hardback and then just give this one away. But it's before the coffee gets cold. And as I'm told, all I know about this is that there's this magical cafe where if you sit in a specific seat in the cafe, it time travels you to different places in time and basically you're supposed to be back in the seat before the coffee gets cold i think that's why it says the title um or maybe i just made that up i don't know but i'm sure there's something to do with the coffee like you have to be back in your seat before the coffee gets cold and that's why it's titled that way i swear someone said that but i really want to read this because i really want to get into the series i don't know if this is like I was told that this is just like short stories, like not short stories, but like it follows multiple different POVs and multiple different people in the seats. So I don't know if this is like a continuing story or if the whole series is like an interconnected standalone where you follow different people and what happened to them when they sat in the seat and where they went, if you get what I mean. But I don't know, but we'll find out and I really hope I'm going to like this book. One of the next ones that I hope I get a chance to get to is Fourth Wing. You have not, you don't know the amount of times I've heard so many things about this book and it's got dragons in it and everybody's obsessed with it. I also bought the second book, Iron Flame, which is down there, um, before reading this because I thought I was just going to love this so much because everybody else does, so why not me? 
But yeah, I'm really excited to read this. And since it's the duology, but I think the third one's coming out soon, I do want to read Fourth Wing and Iron Flame, hopefully by the end of this year. And I thought um, Fall Time would be the perfect time to do that. So I can't wait to do this. I can't wait to get back into fantasy. I haven't read a fantasy in so long. So I really can't wait to get back into this. And why not start with one of the biggest fantasy books that's come out this year? Talking about fantasies, I also wanted to read One Dark Window, which also everybody's been talking about, but everybody's had more of mixed reviews th with this book. Some people say it's good, some people say it's not. Um, I did try and, I read like maybe two words of this and realised, no, I'm not in the mood for it right now because I read it in the height of summer, which probably was my fault. So I thought it'd be perfect time to read this. Like it literally even looks like an autumn book. Like. It'd be a perfect time to read this and if I like it then I could maybe even read the second one as well if I have a chance. Okay I lied by saying that the Reaper was the last romance. I'm also going to read Normal People mainly for the simple fact of this book has been on my TBR for ages like probably going on three years now and I don't know it gives me autumn vibes. The reason why I haven't read this is because I'm kind of scared to read it because so many people, you either hate this book or you love this book. And so some people say that they love it and that it's amazing and um, some people say that it's completely boring and that nothing happens in the book and there has no plot. Um, so I don't even know. It's like, This is either everybody's favourite book or everybody just doesn't like it. And all I know is that it follows this couple throughout years of their relationship follows how they meet and stuff and that's why people say it has no plot because you're basically just following this couple five years of their relationship and that's it so but i finally want to get this off i do not want to go into 2025 with this book on my tbr still and it's such a short book so i don't know why i haven't just read it yet because look at how short this is like i really just want to read this book if i like it i like it if i don't then i don't but yeah i need to finish this believe i haven't read this yet if you don't know the city of bones series is my favorite book series up there along with harry potter obviously Cassandra claire is one of my favorite authors she came out with this book probably at the start of this year and i haven't read it yet mainly because it's massive and also mainly because maybe i was i don't know if I was just saving it or just I'd have I just never got around to it to be honest I was saving this book until I had less books on my TBR as a little treat but I just never got around to it and you know what I do want to finally read it um I think this is a part of a new series that she's right she's writing I think um but yeah it, this it's huge I think it's like probably 600 pages yeah it's around 600 pages um but yeah, I don't know what it's about. Yeah, I've, it's been so long that I truly forgot. It says, one was raised to rule, one was trained to die. Welcome to the Chronicles of Castletine. It's something to do with twins or something? I don't know. I'll see when I go into it. Um, but actually, I was so obsessed that she was starting a new series um, that this I pre-ordered this book. And bear in mind, I don't pre-order books. For, for me, I personally don't see a point in pre-ordering books because... I'll just buy the book on Amazon when it comes out. I don't need to pre-order it. Because if I pre-order it, I'm just going to keep thinking, oh my god, I've ordered the book. I can't wait till it gets here. I can't wait till it gets here. And then I need to wait until it gets here. Do you get what I mean? But if I just order the book when it comes out, it comes out, I order it on Amazon, it gets there the next day. It's not like a long waiting thing. So I don't usually pre-order books. But with this one, I pre-ordered it. This is the first book I've ever pre-ordered in my life because I just needed this in my hands immediately. And I didn't want to... I didn't want to forget accidentally to order it so it's massive and it's got some very big names on the back that have like left reviews george rr R. martin leah bardugo holly black so yeah i can't wait to read this book i'm really excited and yeah it's it's called sword catcher by the way i realized i never even said the title it says everything i look for in fantasy by george uh, that's what george rr R. martin said so yeah, I can't wait to read this. It looks amazing. The cover is absolutely beautiful. So, and it's Cassandra Clare. I'm so sure, I'm sure this is going to be like a five star read at least. 
I actually haven't heard many things about this book, which is like surprising since she's such a big author. No one's really talked much about this book, which is which also makes me a bit nervous because I found out that this book was coming out on a fluke. Like I didn't hear about this book at all on TikTok, zero. And I'm like, why is no one talking about this? Is the book bad or something? But yeah, I'm gonna read to see for myself why no one's talking about this. I also want to get around to reading The Light That Binds Us by Andy Darcy Theo. If you don't know, he's a TikToker who made this book. I actually followed him on TikTok before he made this book and I found this at the works and I just had to get it because I've loved following his journey and the, the hype he puts around this book. It just sounds amazing. So I did want to read this and it's a fantasy so I wanted to save it till, you know, autumn. I don't know what it's much about. I know it follows this, it's kind of like... Percy Jackson-esque that's what everybody's always said that's sort of like Percy Jackson about a boy who figures out that he's got powers that's all I need to know that's all I need to know I haven't actually read the Percy Jackson series but I do want to read that probably next year because yeah I probably won't be able to I probably won't be able to finish it this year but next year I'll definitely be able to start that so I can't wait to read that but yeah I also can't wait to read this the Invisible Life of Addy LaRue. Um, first of all, this cover is beautiful. And I've also had this book on my TBR for eons. I've mainly been trying to pick books off my TBR for my autumn instead of buying new books. So this is basically about a woman who sell, sells her soul or something um, to the devil or sells her soul to someone in 1714. And basically she is immortal she's able to live forever but there's a catch that no one remembers her like someone will meet her and then as soon as they turn away from her they'll forget that she exists so she basically has no one until one day she runs into someone who remembers her and basically yeah you're following that story i've had also i've heard also mixed reviews about this some people say it's good some people say that it's really boring and drawn out it is a big book so yeah but i thought this would be perfect for the full time and i could finally get it off my tbr i've been trying to focus on books i've had on my tbr for a long time so that i can just get them off and if i don't read them by the end of this year i'll just i'll give them away because i can't have this many books on my tbr like honestly it's ridiculous so yeah i need to do something about that I'm very scared to read this book and not because it's huge which it is but mainly because I feel like I'm gonna be too dumb to read this book everybody has read this book said it's amazing it's five stars but there is some people that say that it's a bit drawn out and boring and that it's a bit confusing and I know that this is basically kind of like a dark academia about this kid um, who goes to live in England and go to Oxford because some people brought him there and there's a strange magic system in this world where basically every th the centre of knowledge is like words like everything is made by words or languages I think it is languages yeah basically the magic system has something to do with languages see I don't even know what's going on now and I've heard the summary of this book but I still I'm every time I hear the summary of this book I get even more confused so I just need to read the book but I'm scared that I'm going to read the book and not like it because I'm not computing on what's happening and it's not because the book is bad it's just because I don't understand because I like dark academia uh, but dark academia that's like simple not for actual linguistics because I didn't take an English literature course so I just yeah that's what I'm afraid of but I want to get this book on my TBR because Again, it's been on my TBR for all, like a whole year at this point. Um, well, not a whole year came out this year, but like it's been on my TBR for a while, and I just want to get it over and done with. I will be doing a reading vlog for this. Actually, for most of these books, I will be doing a reading vlog because most of these are like TikTok books. For example, Fourth Wing, I'll probably be doing, most likely, will actually be doing a, a vlog. I'll be doing a vlog for Babel, Babel, Babel. I'm calling it Babel. Doing a dog. I'm doing a reading vlog for Babel as well so you'll see all these and you'll hopefully see my reviews of next where the crawdads sing I don't know if this is a thriller I think it is I've had this on TBR again for ages and it is a movie but the reason why I haven't read it is because honestly this cover creeps me out that's literally one of the only reasons it creeps me out I don't know what it's about it says 
For years, rumours of the Marsh Girl have haunted Barclay Cove, a quiet town on the North Carolina coast. So in late 1969, when handsome Chase Andrews is found dead, the locals immediately suspect Kaya Clark, the so-called Marsha Girl. But Kaya is not what they say. Sensitive and intelligent, she has survived for years alone in the marsh that she calls home. Finding friends in the gulls and lessons in the sand, then the time comes when she yearns to be loved, when two young men from town become intrigued by her wild beauty. Kaya opens herself to a new life until the unthinkable happens. Okay, so I think it's kind of like a romance thriller-esque. It's got romance thriller, basically a guy ends up dying, everybody thinks it's her and it's not. And yeah, sounds interesting, very full-like, which is why I chose it and need to get it off my TBR. So... Then this one. I bought this because, look at that cover, it's beautiful. It's called God Killer by Hannah Kanna and I know there's a second book to this but honestly I want to get this off my TBR because I bought it because the cover is beautiful but also I feel like if I don't read it this year I'm probably never gonna read it. So I need to read it in autumn time. This is a fantasy about this woman who is trying to kill this god because her family was murdered by a god and now gods are forbidden but they still like secretly wander the kingdom uh and basically kissen which is a child tries to make a living by she tries to she wants to kill them all and then she meets a god that she can't kill and i'm guessing it's a uh, romance stuff yes i don't know i'm guessing it's a romanticy maybe so I'm excited to read this. I hope it's good. I need to get it off my TBR. If I like it, I'll probably read the second one, but we'll see. Next, I have The Song of Achilles by Madeline, Madeline Miller. This is a Greek mythology retelling with, I think it's, I don't know much about Greek myth, myth, mythology, so I feel like it's gonna go Achilles and his friend, uh, Peleus. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know much about Greek mythology. That's the reason why I haven't read this book yet, even though it's so short. I feel like, again, with the Babel thing, I feel like I'm going to feel very dumb reading this book because I don't know if it's like... People say that this is like their favourite book of all time and that this book is really good and it's got some really good reviews. But personally, it's a bit of literary fiction. It's not my genre. Most of these, most of literary fiction is in my genre. So that's why I'm sometimes scared to read a little bit of fiction, but I just need to get it off my TBR because it's it it's been on it for ages, and I feel like the perfect time to read literary fiction is in like autumn time. I don't know why I feel like it just is. It's when I get mostly in the mood. So since it's turning autumn, I'm gonna get more in the mood to read f literary fiction. I thought I'd put this on my TBR to read it. Next is if we were villains. I actually tried to read this and ended up softy and effing it for a while mainly because um honestly i'm a bit skeptical about this one because this is like shakespeare and it's about these kids and basically something happened when they were in university it's dark academia but one of them ends up dying and basically it's told from the perspective of one of the kids who's in jail and a police officer's interviewing him trying to find out what happened and basically he's telling the story what happened and um yeah that's basically it but the thing is they're like theater kids they were like shakespeare they studied shakespeare that's what they did in university so basically the first couple of pages was just them talking in shakespeare and it like it's got lots of shakespearean language for example literally the prologue is i sit with my wrist cuffed to the table and think but that i am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house i could i could a tale unfold whose lightest word would horror up thy soul. When I read that, I was like, okay. And then I read chapter one and I was like, yeah, I'm going to stop doing epics. I don't think I can do this right now. This is more of an autumn book. I'm not, I can't be sat here thinking what Shakespearean languages is because I can't understand it. But yeah, um, I might hard DNF this if the Shakespeare is just too put off in because some people do say it's a bit off-putting especially if you don't some people do say it's a bit off-putting especially if you don't know any Shakespeare or don't like Shakespeare but I feel like if you like Shakespeare that you would probably like this book so yeah but 
It's a thriller. I love dark academia thrillers and everybody recommends this if you like The Secret Patient. Not The Secret Patient. Everybody recommends this if you like The Secret History by Donna Tartt, which I loved. It was a five star rate for me. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give it a try. And now on to the thrillers. All of these are most likely going to be for October time and all of these will most likely be in a video that I'm gonna do with like reading thrillers for a week. So yeah, let's go into the thrillers because I'm really excited to get into this. First one is This Lie Will Kill You by Chelsea Pitcher. I picked this up on a whim because I kept seeing this everywhere on TikTok. I mean, it just seems like a good fun thriller. I don't think it's gonna change my life, but yeah, it's about someone died in this friend group and basically one year later, a bit one year after that they all of the people that were involved are invited to this mansion where they say they're going to get a fifty thousand dollar prize and that ends up not being true and basically uh basically this person set them up to go to the mansion i think so they can find out what really happened to the person that died that's what I'm getting from it. It doesn't give much at the back of the summary, but I don't know. I thought it would just be a fun palette cleanser read from all these like hard books that I've put on my TBR. This is one of the most thrillers that I'm excited for. It's called The Trap, and this is actually, I haven't seen it anywhere. It's not like a TikTok famous book or a book two famous book. All these books have been somewhere on book, book talk. Most likely they're probably all famous on booktok book talk. this one i found at my local store and i was just intrigued by the cover and i read the tagline and it says to catch a killer she'll become a victim and i was like oh okay and then i read the back and i was like okay this book is immediately coming home with me so yeah this is not even known anywhere but i feel like everybody needs to read this book and i haven't even read it yet because i feel like i'm gonna love it but the back says i'm not even gonna tell you the summary i'm just gonna read it to you so you can feel how i felt Stranded on a dark road in the middle of the night, a young woman accepts a lift from a passing stranger. It's the nightmare scenario that every girl is warned about, and she knows the dangers all too well. But what other choice does she have? As they drive, she alternates between fear and relief, one moment thinking he's a good man doing a good thing, the next convinced he's a monster. But when he delivers her safely to her destination, she realises her fears were unfounded, and her heart sinks, because a monster is what she's looking for. She'll try again tomorrow night. But will the man who took her sister take the bait? Excuse me, what? Basically, as you couldn't tell, someone kidnapped her sister and she's looking for her sister. So she goes back to the place that her sister was last seen, hoping that her kidnapper will drive by and kidnap her as well. I'm like, I need to read this like immediately, but I'm saving it. I'm saving all my thrillers till October time. So... As well as that, it's also really floppy. But anyway, I feel like everybody should read this. And this will be in the video of reading thrillers for a week. So I really can't wait to read that. I can't wait till October to read all these. Next one is Then She Was Gone. This one is also famous on TikTok. And as is the author Lisa Jewell. I think she's done other books that like are quite famous. But basically this is about a woman who, um, I think... Um, her daughter goes missing and then 10 years after that she starts dating this guy who's got this daughter who suspiciously looks a lot like her daughter that went missing and that's the plot and I really found that that was like okay I need to know what happens there because that seems like a very interesting plot as well so I can't wait but it also just appears to be sad because it says here a thriller that will break your heart so Apparently it's like a sad thriller, but yeah, those two are like the thrillers that I'm like most excited to read because the concept is just amazing. I've never seen a concept like those two thrillers ever, so I can't wait to read them. Next one is Such a Good Mother. It's been on my TBR for ages. I can't remember what it's about. Um, it says... An invite to die for. Rose will do anything to give her son the life she never had. When she's invited to the circle, an elite clique of beautiful, wealthy, and influential school mums, it seems her dreams are about to come true. For these are no ordinary women, and their connections will open doors Rose never knew existed. 
There's the powerful queen bee, the social media star, the secret, secret alcoholic, the serial cheater, and then there's the one who turns up dead. Each woman is desperate to appear perfect, but which one will kill for it? Well, this seems like just a classic feel of like mystery murder who done it, but can't wait to read this as well. Um, I hope I get to it because I still have more stuff to read in October, so I really do hope I get to that. But yeah, um, seems interesting. Next is Five Survived by Holly Jackson. Holly Jackson was the person who also did um, A Good Girl's Guide for Murder and The Reappearance of Rachel Price, which I have. I've got the whole series and I've got The Reappearance of Rachel Price as well. But um, this one I th feel like is the, one of her least popular books. Everybody has mixed opinions about this. Some people like it, some people don't. But this is basically about a group of friends that go on this RV van ride somewhere and they get stranded, I think. They get stranded somewhere, basically and someone's trying to kill them and secrets come out about them and that's basically it what really drew me in is that apparently like you've got the whole like map for the van which i really like so yeah i want to read that in october as well and one of the books that i'm most excited for actually to read is it by stephen king i wanted to read this book for a while I've always wanted to read it like during October because I felt like obviously it's a perfect time to read it. I just never did it. The other day I found the book in Waterstones because Stephen King's doing like redoing all of his covers for all his past books and I found it um, by Stephen King. I found the new covers and it's beautiful like the whole grated covers it's on the screen now so I absolutely love those covers and then when I opened up the book the text was tiny absolutely tiny so that's the reason why i didn't buy it i want to read this book but i think i'm gonna read it on the kindle and then later buy the physical copy because i'm not i can't read that text that text was too small even if you had four glasses on you wouldn't even even if you had four like glasses you wouldn't be able to see that um and then the second one is also another stephen king book and that is misery by stephen king i've watched the movie very interesting. I've always wanted to read the book as well, so I thought maybe I could do like a Halloween video of reading Stephen King for Halloween or reading Stephen King for a week or reading Stephen King for the first time. I don't know, but those are definitely also going to be included in videos, so yeah, I can't wait to read them. Honestly, I'm so excited for autumn. I can't wait to read all these books, and I hope you're excited too because with all these books, there's going to come loads of reading vlogs. Um, I just love the coziness of it. So yeah, don't forget to check my social media down below. I'm gonna where I do reviews of my books on TikTok, and reviews of my books also on Instagram if you want more of a written style. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I can't wait to film all these videos for you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.